Buddy, so I had a request actually from my dad to do a live video tonight and um, show you guys what I'm making. I know he's really excited about it. So we're out here in the garage. It's Sunday evening, like 9:15, and um, what's going on, Carter? What my dad has? What's going on, Sean? Uh, what he's kind of requested is. He wants what I would call a cowboy campfire stand. Uh, that seems to be the most relatable search I can find on the internet. And you guys have seen it if you've ever watched western movies sit you up here. So what you have is you have two vertical pieces. You can see these have hooks that I've welded on there. And then one cross member, which is this piece. And then on that cross member, you have different size hooks. So I'll show you what I have so far and how we're how we're working on it here. But this is for the tent. And he asked uh, he asked me to build this. Actually, I believe last year we uh, we put in more uh, plans and stuff. We actually wrote stuff down at uh, deer hunting. So I'll show you here. These are what these hooks look like. You get the wide looped end for the actual tubing and then a short end which you could hang a pot or whatever. And this is the beginning of it. He also wants a fire grate that is going to hang on here also. So with these vertical pieces, they're an inch and a quarter wide and here's what those hooks look like. We got them welded on. Here's the top one, and I'm going to put a cap on the top so if he has this up in the winter time, snow won't get in it and melt and expand and, and ruin it, so it'll be capped off, and it's going to be buried in the ground. He's going to have a system where these slide into another tube in the ground, and it'll be in the ground one foot. So in total length and height, this is five feet, so it'll be a foot in the ground, so it'll be four feet tall having three hooks, one at four feet, one at three feet, and one at two feet, and yeah. So that is what's going on. Now, I ran out of material last night, so I still have to make two of these hooks, and I have to cap it off, and I just took a piece of flat, flat stock steel, and I've been grinding it down to make a cap because we don't want any I don't want any snow or anything to get in there because if he goes up there and he cooks in the middle of winter and it's packed full of snow it's all gonna melt and it's gonna freeze it's gonna blow that pipe out or it very well could so even um, you know condensation and stuff it'll just rot that tube out from the inside so I'm gonna set you guys up and it might get loud, whatever, but my dad actually requested that I make a video on it. So I'm going to make a video on it. He wants to watch it, I guess, during the day. So let's get started. I'm going to grab those tubes and that quarter inch um, round stock. We're going to cut it down. We're going to make what we need out of it. So, this here is a very easy project. I worked on it yesterday for a little bit. It's going to get more complex as we go, but it seems to be very easy. There we go. This, all this tubing was bought at Menards, um, being that the local iron place, they're only open till noon on Saturdays, so yeah. Yeah, it's an inch and a quarter, and then the wall thickness is, oh, it's about an eighth, so it's reasonably heavy. I told my dad, I said, I want to build it, I want it to work for a long, long time, but I don't want to overbuild it, I don't want it to look out of place. So I don't want, when you look at the tent, let's say you're in a boat on the lake, I don't want the focus to be on this as much as on all of it. You know, I don't want it to take away from the mystique. 
So um, what I gotta do is I gotta make two of these hooks. And how I've done that, last night worked out very well. You wouldn't believe it, but you buy this little quarter inch stuff at Menards, it's very inexpensive. It's like two or three bucks. I wanna make sure I get you guys a good view. <laughs> Let's see if we can get you guys a little better view here. Set you up right here. Now if you guys fall over, I'm sorry, I'll try to fix you as we go. But anyways, you get your vise. I ended up just putting it down past what I would imagine to be maybe a quarter of an inch. And it's really easy when it's a long piece like this. This is a three foot piece, but you just bend it by hand all the way down. I was at first um, heating these up with like a torch, but it works just as well like this. And then the important part here is that this tubing, this is just a scrap, it's a short piece, but that it fits on there very solid like. So you can see how that's just going to fit on there. And my first idea for this was to take a piece of the larger tubing and cut it down. But what I found is uh, is it didn't seem to have a very good you know it just didn't feel right. And when I bent it open it stressed the center point of this and um, I had one piece break on me so I thought well I know that that might not last forever and the last thing I want is for my dad to have to take this thing down and bring it home so I just made kind of a I don't know what you'd call this, just a simple hook. And what I did is I tried to match it up with this one with the design. This one's actually pretty close as far as the bend goes. And then I'm going to cut it to match. So the best way, since I don't have a silver pen a silver pencil or anything is just a regular pencil. I have one hanging around here we are. So this is just a regular lead pencil but it works really decent for this. Try not to take out my light. A lot of the stuff is built on the fly you can't really just you just do um, wing it but then there's a lot of times where you do need kind of a Take a, a moment, you know. Take a moment and get it. So I just marked this. And I'm going to cut it using my angle grinder right here. So for the grind disc, I got, I got switched out to a cutoff wheel. And this is the part that's going to get pretty loud. So if you're watching this with like headphones and you see me grab this, I would say uh, hey, you might want to turn it down a little bit. This disc is actually kind of on its way out, but I'm going to wear some ear protection. I got my glasses on, so that is what it is, but it's going to get loud here, so stay for just a moment. You're going to see me. I'm going to match it up over here. It's like I just need to take the end of this off just a titch. My disc is on crooked. There we go. There we go. All right. Is this OSHA approved? I don't know. So there we go. There's one. So just take a peek here. So 
as you can see, pretty much line up the same. And I'm going to use this now as my pattern. So I just have to copy that. So, same idea, you take your little bar stock. You learn from your first time, so that one there was a little long, so I'm going to try to bring it up a little bit. We're going to bring it down all the way until we hit the vise. And once I weld on this, you know, it'll be red hot. And that's the easiest time to hit it with the hammer or whatever. So those line up real nice. Make our mark with our pencil wherever I decided to set it down. I'll just use this to make a mark. See the notch. Once again, we'll put on our hearing protection. Ow. They're very close. And I believe that the long end here, if I flip these around, they all are really close. So now comes the fun part. So we'll get the welder on. Get this out. This is a real, actually the, one of the easiest parts here. So I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to just eyeball it and see if we can't get it like so. Cut it, cut it in the vise. You're making me nervous. Yeah. You know what? If you're not making somebody nervous, you're probably not trying hard enough. <laughs> I could do that, but I cut them all last night out of the vise, so. And last night, the little pieces I, I, were, I was holding on to were this big. So, I don't know, I guess I'm maybe more comfortable with it than I should be. Okay. So if you haven't ever seen this, this is like a wire cup. These things are great. For more ways than one, it's gonna clean off the uh, black, coating they put on these pipes because this is just like plumbing pipe but it's steel so it's fine um, and it's going to clean that off and then when I weld it leaves this uh, spatter on there so it works to grind that off as well and then once I'm done welding I actually take it and I buzzed it over the ends and it rounds them off kind of in a nice natural looking way so I'm going to measure down, this is the three foot, uh, the three foot one, there's my pencil. I'm going to measure down three feet, because this one's out, or, uh, sorry, this is, this will be two feet down. I think it's three feet up is what I'm thinking. So I'm going to measure that. Looks like I just have to slip this up a little bit. and we'll put on our face protection. I'm just going to grind off this black uh, coating. measure again. I'm going to take our little piece and I'm going to line it up on there to make sure I have all of it uh, cleared off enough. That is if I can find my tape measure. I keep setting stuff where I can't find it. So 
a two-footer. And how I've been doing this is I make the actual, being that each one of these in length varies, I make it so that the saddle is at what will be two feet. So we've cleared off plenty. Let me just show you guys. This here is the area I cleaned. That mark that you guys can hopefully see is that. And then this will get welded on. And all I do is I eyeball it straight. Because like I said, once it's on there, this is small enough where I can hit it with a hammer and straighten it out. So I'll eyeball it. And then we're going to weld it. And this is my Hobart AC welder. Honestly, if you don't if you don't weld a lot, it's really cheap to get into one of these. This is make like a $300 purchase. And the good part about it is if you don't do a lot of fabrication, you can use magnets for your projects. And being that it's an AC unit, it won't um, the weld won't contra won't be ruined because of the magnet. If you use a DC unit, the magnet will pull your arc or your puddle and it really does some wonky stuff. So if you want to fabricate some stuff for pretty simple, um, just get yourself one of these Hobarts. They work pretty well. I mean, I haven't had any issues with mine. I'm going to use this magnet as my phone perch. Looks cold in the garage. Let me go check the temperature. It is, uh, it is 30 degrees in the garage. So today for this, actually I got one sitting here. This is a 6011 rod. It's kind of my go-to. I also have 7018 AC, but the 6011 burns hotter and is way easier to, if you're attacking something, you want that, you want that power right there. So works very well. This one's actually a little crusty. The end's poking up. It's going to be, uh, it's garbage. So let's grab a full length one. All right, so there's that. We're going to just pop on our helmet. And we'll get to welding. Now I just want to make sure that I line these up right. It's going to be short end on the pipe. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure I get my bottom line. Line it up. Tack the top of it, and now I can make some slight adjustments if I need to. Obviously, if I make it too much, this thing might fall off, which is fine. I can always tack it back on there. I'm essentially just eyeballing it up and down to make sure it all looks good and straight, so you can see it on there. Also, I want to look at it sideways and make sure there's not a wicked gap in there. And now I'm going to tack the bottom and then I'll weld down and then I'll probably turn it weld on, weld on one side and weld on the other. So it seems to be the best way to go. So this is running at 70, maybe 70 between like 70 and 75 which is relatively low being that this thing can go all the way up to uh, like 200 so this thing will weld all day at this low of a setting you want to weld on this side first looking at it from the side I can see that my my hooks here are uniform in length so I'm going to lay a bead in that little cradle 
Might take me two passes, might take me one. I mean, being that, the good thing about having a project at home is if you lay down like a nasty looking bead or something like that, you cut it out and you fix it. Obviously, it probably won't happen, but because this is so simple, but what I'm saying is you, can, you have all the time in the world. So I'm gonna weld this up. And also by taking your time you can get it to the right angle that you want it to be at. And now I can kind of show you guys the slide here. Since I was just talking about what slag is, I can show you guys. So this is what's known as a slag hammer. And this is what I use that wire cup for. But if you look at this weld, you can see it looks like garbage. But if you hit this stuff off, underneath of that is the weld. Now I could sit here and fool with this forever, or I set you guys down again. Or the easiest way is just to use this wire cup. It's a lot faster than using a wire brush and that slag hammer. little touch up things that I want to that I want to do but there you go so that's what it that's what it looks like underneath that like hard crusty slag which is when you weld you can't have oxygen um, can't have oxygen with a weld because it'll ruin it so that actually protects it from the oxygen <sighs> people are commenting I'll answer some of those I do suppose <laughs> going into New York City to do a job. Hope you have a good night. Look forward to watching later. See you later, Gino. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the bottom here, and then on the other side I'm going to lay a second pass because I wasn't happy with the fusion. It's probably more than enough, but I'm building this for uh, building this for my dad. So I want it to I want it to be good, if you will. So yeah, I'm just going to wrap this on the bottom. Come on. This thing's being whiny today. I had zero issues with it yesterday. Today, it like me. Ooh, a text message. Oh, no, a Facebook message. Tiny bit more power since it was a lot warmer out here yesterday than it is today.
according to the drawing that we drew up and had three of these and it's gonna sit a foot in the ground so there you go and we grab this little spare piece of tubing this will be the crossbar this will be the crossbar that holds the main ridge pole if you will so there's three of these Oh, so there is one down and then this will sit a foot in the ground this is the measurement that I really want to know so this first one will be two feet off so I'm wondering if I should do one more but actually two feet let's see you build your fire you build your fire you're already a foot and then you got some flame so two feet is actually probably pretty good for the lowest setting especially if we're going to build a hanging grate that's going to be on there so yeah <laughs> don't mess with yeah anyway so now we're going to do this one the hardest part i think of this project is going to be um, putting on those end caps and getting them to look right. Isaac asked what kind of welding do I do? I use a mig, well, I use pulse mig currently as my, I've done uh, short arc, short arc mig for a long, long time. I started doing pulse, then went to short arc, which is essentially the same process, but a, the short arc is a dirtier process. And then now I'm back to, uh, keep messing that up. Now I'm back to pulse. sorry two feet the two foot mark is going to be the cradle of the helio Isaac asked what am I fabricating so what I'm building tonight is for the tent up north if you watch Joe and Zach's survival for the tent we have the fire pit out, or my dad has the fire pit out front and what he wants is um, in case you didn't know my dad is a huge fan of like gun smoke and like western films and what he always sees are these stands that they built so he got him and I were talking about it and uh, and uh, he wanted to build one of these so he can hang like his uh, like cast iron pots and stuff like this big big ones I'm at a loss of what the heck it's actually called but this here is a stand it's gonna be a foot in the ground it'll be four feet tall and on the stand, in the ground, he's going to bury a pipe. I think he's actually going to cement a pipe. And this will slide into that pipe, and it'll, so it'll be held nice and uh, supported. And then across it will be this ridge pole, if you will. And then on that, he can carry all sorts of... Um, I'm going to build him a fire grate for it and some other stuff as well. So, um, in fact, let me show you guys this since I got 29 people watching and I didn't really have that many when I started this. So, these, I have to build one more because I got. So, this will hang on the pole and then on the bottom side you can hang your pot. And I got these two other sized ones as well. I'm going to build one more in between this size and this longer one here. So one, two, and three. I'll, I want four. 
So robot welders are cool. I got trained a while back if you've been watching I went to Days and I got trained to work on a, a robotic welder and so far I haven't got to touch it since I came back tonight but I got to get trained for it so one of these days they'll have me running it one of these weeks I'll get it all figured out anyways so this one here is at two feet like before we we'll to be putting on this is a quarter inch helio and uh, just have to get it on here, right? As far as the lining up of it goes, it is purely by eye because there's really there's really not a good way that I could think of when I built it to uh, to kind of get these in line. tacked up. Now comes the fun part. There we go. Looks good. Okay, and then we we'll put another tack on the bottom here and then I'll weld it. I think I see the comment come through. Ever thought of underwater welding? Um, yeah. Yes, but the thing is underwater welders might get paid like 80 plus dollars an hour but they only work two days a month. So it's supply and demand. I'd rather have something to go to every day but it is very cool and very dangerous also so I'm going to attack the bottom and being that this bad boy is acting a little finicky I'll give her another half turn heat it up a bit Second weld is always better because everything's preheated. So turn her down, get this side going. good. We're going to switch to the earmuffs and grind off the slag. See, they're all straight in line. That is not going to go anywhere for 50 years, hopefully. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that looks. So there you go, those are the three hooks. The only thing i got to say is uh, this top hook is a little shorter. It should work just fine. They're both matching. 
it'll still work just fine. Yeah, there's more than enough meat on there, so we're good. But the these other ones here are a little beefier. I figured that the top one wouldn't be used nearly as much. All right, I think we had another comment coming in. He said, hey man, how's the weather? Um, pretty crappy. <laughs> Cold. Mike said, if, you're, if you ever want to relocate to Michigan, we are hiring for aerospace and automotive. Yeah. So what I have to do is I have to make one of these with the length in between these two. So let's line these up. So this one's 22, and that one's a foot. So I need something five more inches than that, so it'll be 17. That way I'll have four, and when they stack, they'll look right. So 17 inches from curve to curve. These here are bent properly to fit, I believe, the fat tube. Not quite. Okay. Well, I'll just replicate the bend on these. This is the fun part. This takes a little while. So let me show you guys that. What we do... That, once again, we... Starts off in the vise. And... That'll do. Need to get the torches. So we're going to heat this up, and once it gets pretty hot, I'm going to set the torches to the side, make some room for them here, and then I'll take this and I'm going to crank that over and probably end up hitting it with the hammer and making a bunch of noise. So that's how that's going to go. So I've actually been carrying a lighter in my pocket because it was out here in the toolbox, cold, and when I started the charcoal grill, um, this by the way is a nice one. How many tips are in here? Four. This is an eight, eight tip torch. Works pretty good. This is a brand new tank on here, so it's kind of been finicky. And then this is your typical normal small one. So we're going to give this a rip for a minute. We'll get this red hot and then we'll bend it. Yeah, it's a brand new tank. That's how you see it. it has a lot of juice in it. I like to use the two because once it gets red hot, like on the bottom here, it's already getting pretty hot. I can use this other one to kind of maintain that heat on the bottom. And work my way up. Since as you know, heat rises. find that perfect deal on here. Come on, baby. Another reason why winter sucks is uh, Is that all your propane tanks, if they sit outside there, you get super cold and they don't want to work right. Come on. Getting hot. If I were to use just a small one, it would take a while.
So we're pretty much when I'm moving the torch, the red's following it. Set those to the side, grab our tubing. Hopefully we can get it, get it right here. Started. The main bend is kind of the hardest part here. There she goes. Not really happy with how that is, but let's see. We will see. Cooking with gas. Okay. Trim this down. Um, so we'll trim that down. I can live with that. Fits on here real nice. Maybe I can hit this with a hit this with a hammer and get her hot just a little now. Oh, this thing's running in all cylinders right now. Beautiful. Oh yeah. So these really do take a lot of time. Each and every one is kind of built purposefully. Crooked, but that's easier to straighten out. So, there we go. Now we just have to build the other portion of it. What are we saying here? Looks good. It'll be a good addition for your dad's place. I think it will be. Your neighbor said you should lift your truck. He also asked if we're going to live stream our reception, and he wants to see me drunk. Well, I probably won't live stream my reception because I'm going to be too busy to do that. And I don't drink, so I probably won't be that fun of a person to watch. Sorry, man. So this is 17. This will be our, our point here. I'm going to try it a different way. I'm going to heat this up red hot, and then I'm just going to hand, hand crank here. this tube and I'm not going to lift my truck because I'm really not into that kind of stuff sorry man I know a lot of people are into lifting trucks and stuff and it just doesn't appeal to me at all 
I don't make I don't make good enough money to spend spend it on something like that, I guess. Come on, don't die on me. All the joys of a cold propane tank. So this bend has to be the opposite way. And this one you actually want to have a good crook. A good crook to it. This can actually be holding a, a pot on it. Handle, if you will. So I think it's a little bit too much. So this hopefully is about 17. I just want a set of four that look proper. I'd say that's like exactly 17. I'm actually happy with that. Okay, we can shut these torches down for a minute. There we go. Mike said your parents raised you right. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't, never ever want to even like get drunk. Not on the weekends, because the weekends, you know, all week long I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do this weekend? And then. The weekend comes and it's like, goes so quick, you know. Last thing I could think of is going out Friday, late after work and getting drunk or something, and then waking up Saturday and not getting anything done. That doesn't sound like fun at all. All right, so we got these. We have to cut them down. Cut them down to match. Probably the best way to do it is just side by side. I'm gonna put my ear protection on. Make sure you guys put yours on because it's gonna get loud for just a minute here. And on. So those are the same. This is the hot end. I got in the bucket. Alright. My battery's getting low. There we go. So let me set these out here. Set these out in lengths so you guys can see them. Hopefully, they look like a decent set. I'll have to throw you guys in the charger because my phone's battery gets low real quick. Uh, where are you guys? Okay, so you can see the set. They all look in accordance with length, pretty much. I'm really happy with that. Woohoo! So, with that being said, now comes the fun part. Gotta plug you guys in, apparently. Um, let me just set you there for a minute. Move my charger. So I can get you guys back where you were. 
come here. Alright, hopefully this works. I have a few chargers that don't work very good. Hey, it worked. Alright, so that should save us for a little bit, but I don't think it'll... I think my battery will still probably die. So now we have to build little end caps for these tubes, if you will. I'm so happy with how these turned out. Like, just perfect. I love it. It looks like a wind chime. Ha! Alright, so we'll hang these here. We'll get this tube out of here since it's hit me in the gut every time I try to walk. And we'll work on this. You gotta close up the ends so no snow or anything gets in there. I kinda ground down one of these pucks to see here. And it seems okay. So if I can just take my pencil. If I can find where I set it. Pencil's always hiding. So, <laughs> someone said, shouldn't you be building that whole thing with your Leatherman? Uh, it'd be hard to weld with a Leatherman, but no, I do have it on me. I got it right here in my pocket. Been using it all sorts of times. So I just made this line on here. You guys might be able to see it. It's right. It's right here. Yeah, you can see it. So I just got that on there. I'll put this on the vise. And. I'm going to put on the flap disc. It's the flap disc. It's essentially just um, sandpaper. And uh, we'll get to. We could cut it. No. I need to grind it because trying to cut that, that disc isn't going to uh, withstand that much pressure. This is the nitty gritty because I don't have. You know, if this was at work, I would probably be able to build this in like 10 minutes. But being that I'm at home and the dynamic is way different, can't get as much done at home. That's a hold. Probably not a good idea. Alright, so we're, I'm going to grind this down a little bit and then we'll see where we're at. Leatherman comes in handy because this thing's gonna be hot. Hopefully it's that hot. Gotta go. See you later, Carter. I'm really happy with that. You know, it's not exactly perfect, but once I run a weld around there, it'll make it seamless. And it'll be good. So, I already cut another piece. And I just have to copy this one onto here.
is hot. Should be pretty close. Yeah, I think they're okay. I think this one will work. Yeah. So this is probably gonna be the hardest welding part of this of this uh, job because it's gonna involve a round weld. Might dip, just touch this up with the grinder to make sure it's good and flat. I did just cut these with a cutoff wheel. Perfection isn't probably the greatest thing to have right now. All right, so this will be the fun part. I have a feeling this is going to give me a hard time, but we'll try. So, all I got to do is weld this little piece on the top of this tube. How hard could it be? <laughs> so I think I'll get it on here, I'll tack it, two sides, and then I'll lay it flat and I'll just do like a quarter bead at a time. Turn on the box here. This is going to be really fun. Yeah, we'll use a full length rod because I just ran out. We'll, we'll try it here. We'll get it. I'd use my Leatherman, but I do not want to get spatter all over it. That is an awful way to do it. Very well could be the way I weld it. Pretty sure it's going to be. Yeah, so I think, I think I'm going to weld it like this, and then I'm going to hit it with the wire wheel, and I'll smooth all the edges out. Hopefully this goes okay.
out. These are not very good gloves to weld. They're very tacky. I have <laughs> I have my actual weld, weld gloves here, but they're very bulky. So. All right. Now that went okay. Wish that would have been a little bit different, but we'll see how it went. Get the uh, thing we got going here. Once again, we'll switch it to the cup. Wire cup. Cap is on there, and uh, let's weld it all the way across. Ooh. I think I can live with that. It's got a hard weld with no bevel. So there you go. This is uh. No, no rain or anything will ever get in there to ruin this, that pipe. Have to do the same. I'm going to leave the bottom of it uncapped. Unless I'm, unless I'm told otherwise, I guess. Because I want to make sure that he is, that my dad is cool with everything here first. This one on there. Same idea. I'm just going to hold it down using alignment pliers, push it on the top, and then I'll get two tacks on there. We can move on after that. This little round piece is a little smaller than that other one. Of course, I don't have my ground attached because I'm a goober. That should help. like it wants to be hotter but I don't dare do it hotter because it'll burn right through this too. Okay. You guys feel better after all falling over? Dang. Alright, that was fun. myself a favor and put on my big glove.
that's okay. There's a couple little parts in that weld that I wasn't too happy with as far as like, as far as, um, there we go. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see before I say anything. We'll see how that turned out. This one too seems to be okay. Can I see that weld there all the way around? Now there's another sticker. I'm gonna buzz the sticker off here. Cap is on. We got our three points of contact where these two bars will be. Maybe, just maybe, I can figure out a demonstration for you guys so you can see. Let me just grab that other bar. So the uh, the fire pit is actually 64 inches wide when we measured it. So this here is 72 inches long along for that overhang on each side that way there's never uh, it being too short and falling off and then um, what was the other thing? Oh, I can't remember what the other thing was. Anyway, so that's that and then I can get this to kind of look right on video yeah, okay, so this well, there, this side will also be in the ground, okay, like so, and these are the hanging pieces, we'll do these in length because like, yeah, put those all in there, so you got all these different lengths, oh okay, I know what I was going to say. These are open, so if you're cooking and you need to raise and lower it, you know, a person on each side can lift this bar up. Okay? Mind you, this is going to be a foot lower than what it is, because it's going to be in the ground a foot. So you can see, I tried putting like a bunch of weight on here. That bar ain't moving. I thought it might be too flimsy, but it's really not. And here's the lowest one. Like I said, it'll actually be it'll actually be a foot lower. So by being a foot lower, this this one here should be almost on the ground. So there you go. But this is what it'll this is what it'll be like, and it'll actually be about this wide, roughly. So what do you guys think? I think it looks good. I think my dad will be happy with it. Obviously it's not done. Um, I'm going to leave these ends open because once this tube heats up, if it gets really saggy or whatever, we'll run another rod through it to strengthen it. 
but uh, I'm really happy with this. I wish I had some sort of something to hang off of it. Here's this contraption. What, what hook is the question? Where's the fingers? Oh, I should hook. There she goes. So this here is one of those uh, garage heaters. And this thing is staying nice and rigid and that's off the ground. So, yeah, this big thing. I imagine that's probably 30 pounds with the hose and everything on there. So, there you go. I really like that. Nice and easy. I know that the um, actual Cowboys had like a portable A-frame style one, but this is more of a tree thing, so. Turned out really awesome. How's Sam's welding skills? Sam can weld. She came out here and did her time, so. Okay, here's something. This has a little bit of an edge to it right here. If we're up at the tent, guess what? I don't have any tools like that, like power tools. So I can take out my little file. I can just touch this up. Oh yeah, no more sharp edge. How easy was that? Bingo. All the uses of one of these is just incredible. So everything is fully welded and as far as these go, I'll ask my dad if he wants me to weld the caps on the bottom or if he wants me to leave them out. That'll be his call, but I think it worked well. So I'm actually probably going to go inside here, but I appreciate every one of you um, watching tonight. It's really fun to kind of, I guess you'd say, like have an audience. For other people that can comment and, you know, give you ideas. So, thanks for watching, guys. And, uh, someone just said, weld your initials on it. No, my grandpa puts his initials on everything, and sometimes it's okay, but I'm not, I'm not going to weld it. Maybe a year, could put, um, 18 on it somewhere. That way, when you look back at it 20 years from now, you go, wow, that's 20 years old, but probably not. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.